The Matrix Resurrections had many Easter eggs and references that you may have missed. Welcome back to the channel, I'm your host The Viking and today we will talk and break down every single one. The Matrix Resurrections is definitely worth another watch, either in theatres or at home. Not just got to do with the plot, because with the plot there is so much to unravel, so much to notice in a second or third viewing. And also from the character perspective, there's so much to dive into, but let's just get away from the story for a second. There's also a lot to look at and dive into in terms of Easter eggs and references to past movies, to past games, to other tie-ins as well, which is a lot of fun and very, very interesting. And don't worry, if you hadn't got a chance to re-watch The Magic Resurrections yet, we will go through every single Easter egg and reference in this video. And if we miss any, make sure you get into the comments and let me know what you picked up. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, Give us your feedback in the comments about what kind of videos you would like to see about the Matrix world next. And check out my Matrix Resurrections review, Matrix Resurrections explained video, the analyst explained and post credit scene breakdown. This comes from Complex.com. 32. The Matrix Resurrections Easter Eggs and References You Might Have Missed Number 1. Heart Old the City Callback The opening of Resurrections takes place in a model which loops the first movie's opening sequence. Small details, like the Heart or the City Hotel setting, repeat themselves. Number two, hands up callback. The police who try to arrest Trinity approach the model's Trinity in similar fashion. She also disarms them and walks on the walls in almost exactly the same manner. Just to add to that, as you can notice when watching the movie, the kick, the slow motion 360 cam kick is very different. And the reason being for that is, in that scene, Bugs, who's obviously a fangirl of the Matrix movies, because of the games and she knows the history, she comments on it not being the same, especially when Trinity is kind of taken down by the agents. That was kind of to resemble us as fans when we nitpick and pick out something that is different in a sequel or in a remake or a reboot in terms of when they try and do a scene again just in a newer fashion. We always point out and say, oh, that's like that other scene, but it's different. That's what that scene was supposed to resemble, just for your information. Number three, Bugs, as in Bunny. The hacker who breaks into Neo's model is Bugs, a blue-haired, non-binary character played by up-and-coming actress Jessica Henwick. She tells Morpheus that she is Bugs, as in Bunny, which also foreshadows the rabbit tattoo she has on her shoulder. More on that later. And also, of course, in the first Matrix... Neo is told to follow the white rabbit. He sees a woman with a white rabbit tattoo, follows her to the club, meets Trinity, and then his world is opened up. But also an added piece of information is that Lily Wachowski was doing an interview, and she said growing up there wasn't much inspiration or much kind of heroes in terms of the transgender community. And for her, her kind of inspiration was Bugs Bunny, because Bugs Bunny would dress up in women's clothing, which I thought was very interesting and also is a way that we all have different perspectives on different things and also to be respectful to that number four a binary critique in a not so subliminal way resurrections is a reclaiming of the red pill culture of the far right who co-opted the iconography of the first film as a means of pushing men's rights and anti-feminism it is no coincidence that the character leading the efforts to rescue neo is a non-binary character nor is it a coincidence that the leaders of the human outpost io are two women who are implied to be romantically involved Co-writer and director Lana Wachowski is a trans woman who came out and transitioned shortly after the success of the original trilogy. In hindsight, the entire franchise can be interpreted as an allegory for a trans individual struggle to assert themselves and find acceptance. Number 5. Root of All Evil If you look closely at the movie theatre banner during the opening chase sequence, the movie currently playing is Root of All Evil, starring Lito Rodriguez. Lito 
is a main character in Sense8, created and directed by Laura Wachowski along with her sister Lily Wachowski. Number 6. Keymaker Callback Bogues and Morpheus duck into a key shop, whose walls are covered with all sorts of metal keys. It's a subliminal reference to the keymaker in Matrix Reloaded, who Neo required to unlock the source. Number 7. Possible Lana Cameo The fans on Matrix Reddit speculate that director Lana Wachowski made a cameo in Neo's computer in this scene. What do you guys think? Is that Lana Wachowski? Number 8. Down the rabbit hole. Sati, who works at the nearby noodle shop, is reading Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. The first Matrix movie was loaded with references to the book and it implies that Neo, like Alice, is stuck in a dream world. The restaurant is a callback to the noodle shop that Neo references in the first film when he's chatting with Trinity on the way to see the Oracle. Number 9. Trinity's Fall. There's a bunch of Matrix memorabilia on Neo's desk and shelves, including this figurine of Trinity diving out the window from Reloaded. There's also a giant hand giving the middle finger, which is a callback to the interrogation scene from the first movie, when Neo flips off Agent Smith. Number 10. Game Awards. We see that the Matrix won Game of the Year at the Game Awards in 1999. In real life, the awards show and ceremony didn't debut until 2014. Number 11. Slow Mo Smith Statue. The bust in Smith's office is a recreation of the slow mo fight scene in Matrix Revolutions when Neo punches Smith squarely in the face. Number 12. Enslaved by Choice. At the end of Revolutions, the machines promise freedom to any human who desires it. We learn, however, that not everybody wants to be freed. Manny would rather stay wired in. The filmmakers highlight this point during the elevator scene where everyone except for Neo is hunched over a tablet or phone rather than interacting with one another. Number 13. Christina Ricci cameo. Christina Ricci makes a cameo as Gwen Devere, a marketing executive who focuses the development of the Matrix 4 around what audiences identify as the brand. Ricky also worked with the Wachowskis on Speed Racer in 2008. Number 14. Delicious Steak Callback Neo eats a medium rare steak during the White Rabbit montage sequence. It's a callback to the restaurant scene in the original film when Cypher met with the agents to discuss the terms of portraying Morpheus and Zeon. Number 15. Trinity's Husband Trinity's Husband, Chad, is played by Chad Talelsky who directed John Wick and doubled for Keanu Reeves in the original Matrix trilogy. He is thus, on a meta, figurate level, a copy of Neo instead of the real thing. Number 16. Blue Pilled The new Matrix has a blue tint to it, in the same manner that the Matrix in the original trilogy had a green tint. The analyst, Neil Patrick Harris, who designed the new Matrix, dresses entirely in blue, including blue-rimmed glasses, during his therapy control session with Neo. Number 17. Deja Vu The analyst cat named Deja Vu is a callback to the black cat from the original film, which Neo sees twice. Trinity then explains to Neo that Deja Vu is a glitch in the Matrix that happens when the machines change something. Also, in the scene where Morpheus first meets Keanu Reeves, Neo, and he doesn't accept that this is real, he thinks that he's dreaming or he makes it up in his head, when the fight is happening, Agent Smith also comes back to his reality, picks up the gun and goes after Neo. Then Neo sees the black cat and then he's snapped into the therapy room with Neil Patrick Harris's the analyst. Number 18. Days Machina. The game's company name is Days Machina. In literature, a Days Ex Machina occurs when an unwinnable or difficult plot scenario is resolved through unbelievable means, sometimes by a literal god descending from the skies. Done well, it's a twist or surprise for the audience. Done badly and it gives the impression that the author lacks the creativity to resolve the plot through ordinary means. Number 19. Sprinkler Callback When Morpheus starts a gunfight in Neo's office, the emergency fire sprinkles turn on. This is a callback to the lobby fight in the first film when the emergency sprinklers turn on after Trinity and Neo blow up the elevator. Number 20. Window Washing Callback An establishing shot in the original film shows window washers outside Neo's building when his boss is disciplining him for being late. In the new movie, Bugs recounts that she was washing windows when she first saw Neo step off the roof. Number 21. The White Rabbit Bugs 
is a figurative white rabbit that Neo must follow. And she is a tattoo of a literal rabbit on her left shoulder. In the original film, a girl with a similar tattoo on her shoulder leads Neo to an industrial club where he meets Trinity for the first time. Number 22. Residual self-image. Neo's residual self-image, his perception of himself, as well as Trinity's, differs from how others see Neo and Trinity. If you look at the mirrors in the background of the film, you will occasionally see a different man or woman reflected back. Number 23, Busan Homage. The scene where multiple train passengers go berserk and try to kill Neo was highly reminiscent of the critically acclaimed South Korean horror film Train to Busan. Number 24, Commander Rowland's granddaughter. Elster, a member of Bug's crew, identifies herself as Commander Roland's granddaughter. Roland fought alongside Neo 60 years prior. He appeared in both The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions as the captain of the Mariner. And he later led Zeon's defense against the machines. Number 25, Niobe is in charge. Niobe, played by Jada Pinkett Smith, appeared in The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions as Niobe. And she played a pivotal role during the former movie's climatic highway chase sequence. Smith reprised her role in Resurrections 60 years after the events of Revolutions. She is the leader of Io, a hybrid human synthonite civilization. Number 26, Merovingian cameo. The Merovingian made his debut in Reloaded as an exiled program. Time has not been kind to him in the last 50 years. He looks dirty, he looks homeless, and he has a rant against Neo. What I loved about this scene was he was kind of like this old school person who now sees technology and people stuck on their phones. And a great line from the Merovingians that we had conversations, now people are texty texty, stuff like that. That was a brilliant scene, it really was. And his scene was only a, a small cameo. And also I think it was kind of a dig at these big franchises that will have a massive kind of cameo appear out of nowhere in a movie when it doesn't even make sense, you know. I thought that was a little dig um, at the big blockbusters there. But I loved the Merovingians cameo and he has survived every single reboot of the Matrix but this time you know it was purged so badly he couldn't kind of uh, continue his wealth or his stars now he's kind of like a homeless guy and he was really out to get Neo so if they make a Matrix 5 I definitely think he will return as well he has a, a vengeance against against Neo big time number 27 bathroom subway fight callback the Neo versus Smith fight in the dusty dirty bathroom recalls both the Smith v Morpheus fight in the abandoned building as well as the Smith versus Neo fight in the subway from the original film. Number 28, Subway Girl. Sati, who debuted in Revolutions as an exile program protected by the Oracle, appears in Resurrection as an adult played by Pranaka Chopra. She fulfills the Oracle's prophecy regarding her importance by masterminding the rescue of Trinity from the machines. Number 29, Mayoral Cameo. Mayor of San Francisco, London Breed, helps get people to safety during the film's climatic sequence. Breed helped secure permits for the film's important set pieces and her cameo was Wachowski's way of saying thank you. That's pretty cool. Number 30, helicopter chain gun callback. There's an iconic shot of ammo shells raining from a helicopter in the first film. Wachowski repeats this shot in Resurrections when the agents target Trinity and Neo on a rooftop. Number 31 ready to launch callback. The final shot of the Matrix shows Neo taking flight for the first time. Resurrections reimagines this shot with Trinity alongside Neo, showing how both of them are necessary to overcome the machines. It is the two rather than the one. 32 end credits the Catrix. I did a special breakdown video of this, but if you wait until after the credits, you will see the game developers at Des Machina spitballing about the debt of traditional media, and one of them brings up an idea for a meme series of videos, the Catrix. End credit scenes are usually employed to tease an upcoming sequel. Based on this scene, we might expect for Resurrections to be Lana Wachowski's final statement on her and her sister's franchise. So there you have it, 32 hidden easter eggs and references in the matrix resurrections if you picked up anything that i didn't pick up in the movie let me know below i'm very interested to see what you saw in the movie that others didn't and if you didn't get a chance to re-watch the movie then i hope this will give your next viewing a greater experience that you can pick up those easter eggs as well guys thanks for watching this video i want to wish you a very happy new year a great 2022 more matrix videos coming to the channel very excited about them make sure you subscribe give a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video if you got to make a matrix game or film what kind of easter egg or cameo would you put into it 
let me know.